doesn't matter if you are an experienced or a new CDL driver for NCDOT, scenes like this can happen if your vehicle is not properly maintained. Daily pre-trip inspection is an important aspect for preventing vehicle failures which could result in serious injuries or a visit by law enforcement. Hello, officer. Now, I know I wasn't speeding, and I did stop at that last stop sign. You're in a heap of trouble, mister. The law don't allow you to operate this vehicle, especially one this big, when all your safety equipment's not working. Mm -hmm. You're in a heap of trouble, all right. You know I've had my eyes on you ever since the start. What about that brake light not working? What about you missing mud flap? As a matter of fact, you could have busted my windshield when I tried to chase you down. Listen here, don't you fellas at DOT have a pre-trip inspection before you hit the road? You fellas need to go ahead and nip it. You hear me? Nip it in the bud. You know what, fella? I got a good mind to go ahead and run you in. But let me just tell you this. It ain't no fun when those iron doors clang behind you. So you need to nip it. Nip it, nip it, nip it. There may be several versions of a pre-trip inspection form being used throughout DOT, but all of them basically cover the major items to look at to ensure your safety. Do you really know what you're looking for when you inspect each item? This video will demonstrate the inspection process while showing detailed views for items that might not be easily visible during the inspection. To help focus your attention, Deputy Barney will be assisting. Engine dust covers and wheels have been removed in some scenes to show a clearer view. Now man, I've only got one thing to say. This is not going to be any kid stuff. There'll be no molly coddling. You're going to be on your own. You're going to have to do this pre-trip inspection every day before you bring this big rig out on the road. So you're going to have to nip it. Nip it in the bud. And if you don't want me pulling you over every day for faulty safety equipment, you're going to have to nip it. And I mean nip it in the bud. The first thing you should be looking for as you walk up to your vehicle is evidence of any leaking fluids under the engine compartment. Any puddles or wet spots on the pavement during dry conditions could indicate a leak somewhere. During wet conditions, be looking for any discoloration on the wet pavement under your vehicle. Also look for unnatural truck lean or broken windshield as you approach. It's a fact that their truck ain't got no lean I can see. Well, listen up, man. Start at the engine and work your way around the vehicle down the side, around the back, and down the other side. Have you got that? Now tick a lock and listen up as Mr. DOT inspector here shows you the finer points of pre-trip inspection. It's not where you start that's important, but that you do a complete pre-trip inspection each day. Depending on the make and model of the truck, some items being inspected, such as fuel and air tanks, may be located on either side of the vehicle. Proper levels for oil, power steering, and coolant fluids are essential for your vehicle to operate in a safe and efficient manner. How do you check your oil? Do you pull the dipstick out and look at it, or do you pull it out and wipe it off first before checking the fluid level? The latter is the preferred method. While you're looking at the reservoir for proper power steering fluid level, also check the windshield washer fluid level. You should also be looking for any evidence of leaks at fittings or the reservoir itself. Let's now take a look at the coolant reservoir. Observe the sight glass on the coolant reservoir to ensure fluid level is sufficient. It is inevitable that fan belts and rubber hoses will eventually dry out and crack over a long period of time. Any evidence of cracks in rubber hoses should be taken care of. Also check for any leaks around hose connections. If fan belts are cracked or frayed, they should be replaced. You need to also ensure that fan belts have the proper tension and are on their pulleys. Look for loose or missing mounting brackets or bolts on the alternator and water pump. Also check for leaks on the water pump and hoses. Look for loose or missing bolts on the air compressor for the air brake system. 
Listen for any air leaks and look for any signs that the air compressor is pumping oil. Let's take a look at the steering box and steering linkage which will have to be done by looking behind the driver's side front wheel. Here's a view with the wheel off for a closer look. Observe for loose or missing bolts, leakage around seals and hoses. If it is loose, the universal joint may need to be replaced. The front suspension system provides more than just a smoother ride. It also supports the weight of the vehicle and works to keep the tires firmly in contact with the road surface. You will need to look behind the front wheels to view leaf springs and shocks. Video also shows a close-up shot with wheel removed to give you a better view. Look for missing, cracked, or broken leafs, retainer clips, and spring mounts on the leaf springs. Also look for worn bushings and loose or missing mounting bolts. See that the shocks are securely bolted both top and bottom and that there are no leaks. Bushing mounts should not be worn. The braking system is probably the most important safety system on your vehicle. Without a properly functioning brake system, your life and that of the motoring public could be in danger. The air brake system consists of the air compressor, air tanks, foot valve, brake chamber, slack adjusters, brake linings, and drums. The automatic slack adjuster adjusts the free play in the linkage between the push rod and brake as the brake lining wears. Again, looking behind the wheel, check for broken, loose, or missing parts. As can be seen in the video, when the brake is actuated, the push rod travel is less than one inch. Well, would you look at that. Front tires should have a minimum of 4 30 seconds tread depth with no evidence of cupping or uneven wear. The minimum tread depth required for front tires is greater than rear tires in order to provide better control with steering. Well, I'll be. Now that makes sense. Check for damaged or bent rims. See that hub oil seals are not leaking. Check that all lug nuts are present, free of cracks and distortions, with no signs of rust trails. Rust trails are a result of water seeping out from under lug nuts, which is an indication that the lug nuts are not tight enough. Well, you know what they say about rust trails. They lead you to the culprit. After finishing with the front end of the vehicle, we work our way along the driver's side to inspect the door, mirrors, and fuel tank. Depending on the model of truck, the fuel tank may be located on the passenger side of the vehicle. Check to see that door opens and shuts smoothly and that door hinges are not worn. Check that mirrors and mirror brackets are not damaged and are securely mounted with no loose fittings by grabbing mirror bracket and shaking. Check that the fuel tank is secure by looking for missing bolts and verifying that tank straps have not shifted. Also check that the fuel cap is tight and that there is no damage or leaks from the tank or fuel lines. When you're driving that dump truck with or without a load, you expect to be able to stop when brakes are applied. Water in your air brake system may affect your stopping distance. Make sure to drain your air tanks each day by pulling lanyard on dump valve I've during your pre-trip inspection. This. Next, inspect hydraulic oil tank by observing sight glass for proper fluid level and any leaks. While looking for any oil leaks on the hydraulic oil tank, go ahead and inspect under the truck. Pay special attention to see that the drive shaft is not bent or cracked and observe frame for cracks, damage, and broken wells. Also observe to see if any holes are damaged in the exhaust system. The rear suspension system supports the weight of the vehicle and its load. You will need to look behind the rear wheels to view leaf springs. Look for missing, cracked, or broken leaves, retainer clips, and spring mounts on the leaf springs. I ain't never seen springs like that before, but it's a fact you sure don't want to overload your springs or you could be in a heap of trouble. Also look for worn bushings and loose or missing mounting bolts. As mentioned previously, the braking system is probably the most important safety system on your vehicle. 
Check the slack adjusters looking for broken, loose, or missing parts. Make sure the brake chambers are not leaking, cracked, or dented, and are mounted securely. Look for cracked, worn, or leaking hoses and connectors. Rear tires should have a minimum of 230 seconds tread depth with no evidence of uneven wear, cuts, or foreign objects between the dual wheels. How do you know that one of the dual wheels is not flat? This can be verified by performing a bump test using a metal or wooden rod to strike each tire to determine if it has air pressure. As can be seen in the video, the bump test is performed on properly inflated tire with a bounce and a flat rear dual tire with a thud. Well, 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 I finally got to use my nice stick, even if it is on just some old tire. As was done with the front wheels, check the rear wheels for damaged or bent rims. See that hub oil seals are not leaking. Check that all lug nuts are present, free of cracks and distortions, and no signs of looseness, such as rust trails. You know what they say about rust trails. Dang it, uh, I think I used that line already. Check to see that a wheel chalk is on hand and in good condition. We've made it to the rear of the truck. Now ensure that tailgate is in place and undamaged. Check that tailgate pins and safety locking pins are in place. You don't want to be dropping your load on our North Carolina roads. That just wouldn't be right. And you could cause one dilly of a pile up. Inspect that all tail lights and reflectors are not missing or damaged and are clean. It's a good idea to carry a rag with you to clean any dirty lens. Check to see that the pinnel hook operates freely, latches properly with the safety pin in place, and is securely bolted. All mounting bolts must be present. Ensure that all electrical connection covers are intact and in place. Both trailer airline connections should be free of damage and have covers in place. Rear mud flaps play an important role in reducing the potential for windshield damage to the motoring public from falling rocks. Nobody, I mean nobody, but Ernest T. Bass can get away with throwing rocks on my watch. Check to see that backup alarm is intact and not missing. Also check to verify license plate is present and legible. Check for all the same items on the passenger side of the truck to complete the exterior inspection. We've made it all the way around the truck. Have we forgotten anything? As you shut the hood and latch it, check to make sure all lens on the lights at the front of the truck are not damaged if you haven't done so already. When was the last time you looked at your inspection sticker? You need to make sure it has not expired. Well, this one looks good. Maybe I ought to check the one on the squad car while I'm at it. You never know when them things can just go out of date. All right, people, let me have your attention. Does everyone know what one of these babies are? A fire extinguisher can be your best friend if you have a fire, but if that fire extinguisher is charged but don't have a safety pin, you might end up like the Pillsbury Doughboy. Anyone seen one of them things go off inside a vehicle? Well, let me tell you, I have, and it's not a pretty sight. Once inside the cab, make sure your seat is adjusted properly for you and check mirror adjustments to ensure blind spots can be viewed without having to lean forward. You never know when the law enforcement might be watching and you best be buckled up or else. To check your truck's lights, turn ignition switch to on position without starting the engine. Turn on headlights, turn signals, and any other lights and make a walk around to verify that all are working properly. Make sure to check both turn signals then emergency flashers, and also high beams on headlights. Engaging the trailer brake valve will allow you to check the proper operation of the brake lights. After checking all your lights and turn signals, it's time to start the engine. Observe the gauges for proper readings and listen for any unusual noises. Activate the horn, windshield wipers, heater, defroster to ensure that they are in proper working order. Make sure the clutch, gear shift, and accelerator operate smoothly. Steering wheel should not have excessive play in either direction before the wheel moves. Place truck in reverse to ensure that backup alarm is working properly. 
This is very important safety feature that must be working to ensure the safety of workers on foot. It is the first thing OSHA checks for when there is an accident. OSHA isn't the only one that checks your backup alarm. You know what I mean? With parking brake engaged, shift truck into gear and gently pull against the brake. Parking brake should hold. Even though you did a visual inspection of the brake system on our walk around inspection, you will need to verify the air brake system is working properly through a series of three tests. Shut the engine off and roll down the window. The first step is the leak test, where you release the parking brake, okay. turn on the ignition switch without starting the engine, and depress the brake pedal. Listen for air leaks and watch the air pressure gauge for one minute. Remember you have to have your window roll down to make sure you can listen for air leaks. Air pressure should not drop any more than 3 psi. The second step in checking the air brake system is the alarm test. Fan the brake pedal until the low air pressure alarm sounds. The alarm should sound around 60 psi. The third step is to continue fanning the brake pedal until the parking brake engages or the button pops out around 30 psi. You should now feel more comfortable knowing that your air brake system is functioning properly and will allow you to stop safely. This daily inspection ensures your vehicle is ready to roll safely down the road. Don't forget to put up the wheel chalk before you run over it. Working for the North Carolina DOT means something. Don't disgrace it. Drive safe. Y'all be safe now. I'm headed back to Mayberry. Take a little nap. Head over to Thelma Lou's. Watch a little TV. Again, be safe out there.